Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to my channel. This is Patrice T. Evans, and I'm really, really excited to be here today to help you navigate how to fight the war against narcissistic abuse in your life so that you can regain your joy. That's the other side of narcissistic abuse. Instead of staying in the aftermath of it, even after you're out of it, and you're not a victim, but you're a survivor, you're not thriving. So what we do on this channel is we're gonna show you how to thrive. It is when you're thriving that you can get into healthy relationships, okay? So that's what I do in coaching, that's what I do here, that's what I do in my um, healing, in my deliverance, and all that God has blessed me with. So today I want to talk to you about how to detect if you, even though you may not be at home anymore and maybe you feel like you've come out of a narcissistic family and you're now doing okay, as you can see, I did in my book, I talk about that, Resilient Joy. It's a really good book on how um, a young woman can uh, come out of Vict having victory over narcissistic abuse and jealousy in family, career, and church. And I've been told, if you look at my reviews, that this is miraculous for a young woman, a young girl. It's great for young girls and for young people to see how to do that. So today we're going to talk about your family. What does your family have to do with you fighting and raging the war against narcissistic abuse, that spirit behind people? This is the deal. You need to know that this is not just narcissistic abuse. This is a cycle and you will be stuck in the loop of this cycle if you don't get to the core of where it all came from. And where did it all come from? It came from your background and her background. Somehow, you believe it or not, you were exposed to narcissistic abuse and you will attract other people who also have that in their family. Now we already know, I've made it clear, that if you're an empath, with many of you are, then you are a magnet to narcissists. But also, if you were an empath, if you were a magnet to narcissists, think about it. In your family, you would have been a magnet to the narcissists in your family. So what happened was, this is what trauma bonding is, and we'll talk more about that, as so I'll get a little more clear on that, but this is what happened. When you dealt with that family member, or those family members, as I did recently, I was talking about my story about my parents and all of that, you love them. You didn't start it, they started it, a cousin. Um, a distant cousin, an uncle, an aunt, a few people, the whole family. When you look at Home Alone, this is the Christmas season, we're gonna look at Home Alone. I'd love to break that down. Comment below if you'd like me to break that down for you. Something happened in that family where Kevin is right. He says he hates his family, he hates this. What did mom do wrong? What If we could break down what happened in that family, we'll know why he was left alone. This is, there was a narcissistic abuse. His uncle was abusive towards him. So this is a little boy that's going through that. And while it seems comical, writers are human beings like us. They got their ideas from somewhere. Yeah, another Christmas movie, Four Christmases. There's a reason why they don't wanna to go to their families. And when you look at it, I can, it's very hard for me to watch the woman and her story because it's very similar to mine. I grew up in a Kruger den, okay? And maybe some of you guys can relate to the guy, Brad. You know, so these are movies that I love watching, but I also sometimes can't watch when it's too close for home, when I've had maybe a conversation with my sister or, um, you know what I mean? Or if I had a memory of what happened to me when I was younger, because this is serious. So while it seems funny and, uh, and it looks like Hollywood and uh, writers love to romanticize narcissistic, narcissistic abuse, you know, but it's very serious. So what happens is, what really would have happened if that wasn't a comedy, is that the little boy, Kevin would have grown up and met a girl that also was used to it and they both feel some familiarity. Even if she's not a narcissist, there's a familiarity that they share and it just makes them feel comfortable with them. And that's really what uh, trauma bonding really is in a sense. That is um, indirect trauma bonding as far as I'm concerned because if you were in it and she was in it but you're both not narcissists, that is indirect trauma bonding, if, if you will. So that is what I thought my first marriage was with my, my children's father, is that he had a narcissistic, I didn't know what the word narcissistic was, I knew what abusers were. I was very, and well, I was, it was early on that I sensed it and I was studying it my whole life trying to figure it out. And it was a little bit later when I knew exactly what the patterns are were from abuser because of that marriage for 14 years. And so we knew, but I did know his whole family was toxic and so was mine, and we were escaping these two families thinking we did it. But see, this is what I'm here to tell you. As much as you want to find this woman, if you're a young man, 25 to 32, and you're ready to find your wife, your Christian wife, 
And even if you're not, if you're a woman looking for the man or anyone who's looking for someone, you need to go back and examine your life. Because what's going to happen is you could put on the best face, have the best degrees, have the most money, have the best car. But what we're doing here is we're going to thriving. And the only way to get to thriving is to fight the war against a narcissistic, abusive de demon behind people and even in your path. So what you would need to do is you need to, and you know I believe in journaling. And we'll talk about that a little more specifically, but you need to go back in your life and you need to start writing down those people that now that it's widespread what gaslighting is and widespread what narcissism is, well, right now, if you're not clear, just people who you know didn't treat you right and didn't give you a chance and they were not kind to you. It could have been your mother, your father, or anyone. It may be very difficult to see it in your immediate parents if you really love them. It's not always easy if you look up to them for the girl with the father and sometimes um, the son with the mother. And even sometimes mother and, mother and, and daughter and son and, and um, father. It depends on how close you work. Because if they, what happened, this is a lot of information, but let me just tell you this. And let comment below on which part of this that you want me to elaborate the most on because I have a wealth of knowledge and wisdom to share with you and I don't have all this time to do it. So if you want to be on my one-on-one -on -one coaching, definitely go in the description and I can help you specifically with what yours and help you at least get to the bottom of who it was. I can definitely help you find that and find out why... Um, you may be behaving the way you do because of those relationships in your life. Okay, it could have been a big sister, little sister, whatever it is. Okay, so I had it all around. It, it was everyone around me, which was very unique. And that's why my story is so unique that I had resilient joy, even be trying to be abused and killed by the demon spirit behind people that was narcissism. Amen. Okay, so we know in this channel as kingdom warriors that we're fighting against the demon spirit behind people who have narcissistic traits and who are narcissistic. Okay. All right. And all of the stuff that comes with it. So if you um, go into your family and you find out who it was, just list those people. Start thinking about the conversations. Start thinking about, write down how you felt. What did they say to make you feel that way? How has that affected you? Because if you're very young and someone says that, you know, uh, you don't really have a nice body. You literally go in your mind as gaslighting, thinking that, and you make decisions in your path because of it. And what we do on this channel is not only regain your joy and learn how to have your joy, but the reason we do that, we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, first and foremost, that gives you joy, the Holy Spirit, one of the fruits of the Spirit. And then you get in the line of surrendering to the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, so that you can go and be in your calling and your purpose. When you're doing that, you meet all of those who God has for you and all of the blessings blessings God has for you, including your spouse, your Christian spouse. That's what I did. You get your kingdom spouse. So we have to rage this war so we can get in line with our calling and purpose so we can be in line with all those beautiful gifts. God showed me that recently. You have like bags of gifts. This is the holiday spirit. Don't you want your gift? So you just have to fight. You have to fight for your gift. Who told you you didn't have to fight for your gift? Yes, the angels are fighting on your behalf. Yes, God's fighting on your behalf. But you're the one in that body. You're the one that has to do your part because in that fight, you're going to grow to be more like Christ every day. You're going to be at your higher level as an empath or as an empathic person, which is as a person. Because when you fight, you grow. You get pruned. You grow, you grow, you grow. What do we mean by fight? We're learning to fight the enemy. The enemy to our minds. The enemy to our souls. And this, this fight unfair, it was an unfair fight for you, is what I'm saying today. It came to you through your family members and through teachers and people when you were younger. And so now that you are older, if you're past 25 at least, or you at least can think about your past now a little bit more, now it's time for you to take the reins. You need to go back and you need to list these people and find out who they were, what position did they have, how did you feel about them? Did you love them? Did you care about them? Did they abuse you? Did they, this is, a trigger, okay? All right, there's going to be a trigger. Did you get sexually abused by them? You know what I mean? And it could have just been touching even with your clothes on. That still isn't right, you know? Did you have anything like date rape? Where, like, I've experienced that, where you're dating, and even though you're really excited about being with the person, you chose not to, but you got, but the person pushed you and kept pushing and pushing and pushing, you know? So these are triggering things that happened, but you know, you, sometimes family members are doing these things with you, which is really awful. I didn't have that with family. I'm not saying I had that with family. I'm just saying sometimes it's a neighbor or family or somebody like family. So it's time for you to look at those people. You're older now, 
and write them down and face those things and get that dealt with. And if you need help navigating that, I can help you. I have 25 free sessions that God told me to give to 25 young men, 25 to 32, looking for their wives. However, God is open that to whoever is going to accept the call. And we will see at that call if this is something that, you know, lines up with what God's doing. Okay. It's for empathic people that have come out of narcissistic abuse, but now they're survivors, but they want to thrive so they can do all the things I said, go in their calling and the purpose so they can find all the gifts and the blessings and the people, including their path. There's a Christian spouse in that path. So once you do that, you start to learn why maybe some of the big things you do, you do it because that happened to you so young. So I told you the fight is not a fair fight. The fight started before you were even clear minded enough to even know that you were fighting. You didn't even get a chance to decide on what side you were on. And he was still fighting you because he already knew that God had a calling on your life. If you're a chosen one, if you're a kingdom warrior, if you were born like that, then the devil knows. He can see who God's got his hands on because I was actually, the devil tried to kill me. Now uh, now I can remember two times because it was when I was three. And then I think it was earlier than that, that I was trying to, that my older sister tried to kill me as a toddler because she was jealous that my mom had another baby and they thought that was funny. And that's not funny with a pillow trying to suffocate me. That's not funny. That's not like, I've seen a lot of videos of little kids hugging and loving their little sisters and little brothers. So that's unusual. And so... I feel like that child, that sister is a narcissist. I feel like she's a narcissist and I feel like my younger sister is um, the youngest. So I really do. I feel like they grew up in the same household as me. And if you don't have that empathy and you're not able to fight this war early because it's not in you to live the way that my family wanted you to live, you grow up and you will just fall into the path of what the devil wanted. Amen. And so, um, if, if you're listening to me, you're an empath and you're wondering why you keep attracting narcissists. It's because even though you're out of the relationships at home, maybe they weren't even with people. It was just at home. Now you're like, well, why do I keep getting the wrong girls? I mean, I'm out of my house. I'm living good. I did all this. I did that. And I was attracted to one narcissistic man that was covert narcissist and one that I believe was a sociopath, meaning straight face lying and, and doing like really extreme things that were like, this is like weird you know what i mean so there's a difference and i can tell you that to comment below if you want me to do a video specifically showing you the difference because i can explain that to you but what you're needing to do now that you're a survivor and i'm praying that you are listening as a survivor if you're still a victim i hope that this can bless you but i'll definitely leave a, um, a number a hotline for you to call i can help you with that but that is not where my uh, god has called me to help you right now in this season in this season that i'm here is you leaving it you're you're out of it at least a year or so or two and i can help you break the cycle so you can find the right person and you won't ever have that in your life like me hallelujah praise the lord um so basically when you find those things out about them and yourself you start dealing with your own stuff now you're more aware of yourself and god has already told me about one more thing i'm going to drop you a lot of wisdom um we're going to talk a little bit about attachment styles so this tells you what kind of attachment style that you would have right now and the reason why you would have a special attachment style is because of how you were treated when you were younger you know, that tells you how you attach with others, how you connect. When you know that, you have a better chance of knowing what kind of person you'll be in a relationship. You're not in a relationship. You're not going to be able to attract. And this is why I use that in my course, Attract the Right Woman Method. And I had something for the women too. Don't worry, call me, contact me if you want something for you too. I have something for you. Um, but the reason the tract is so important is because it's what you, the work you did inside, you can't hide that and the lack thereof. You show it in your words. You show it in your body language. You show it in, and look how I'm sitting now. Do I look confident? Am I looking at you straight in the eyes? Am I seeming like I have the authority of the Holy Spirit in me? Or am I skirmishing and I'm acting like I'm looking around? You know, you can tell when people have done the work inside and when the Holy Spirit is in them and God has delivered them. You want to get your deliverance done and all that done for yourself because then you're going to carry yourself in a way while you're in your path and purpose that attracts another person who's like that. And that's the thing. If you don't, you're going to attract like I did someone who's where you are. My first husband who passed away, he said, water seeks its level. So wherever you are, you're going to seek people at that level. And while you think you're managing all of your stuff well, and you don't see it and you're managing it, people see it. The wrong people will see it.
You could either attract a narcissist, which is more likely what you're going to do because they're the outgoing ones that will try and wow you and the charismatic comment below if you want me to talk about the positive feeling sides of a narcissist. I can tell you about that too. That's I me. Mean, think about it. Why do we fall for them? Those of us who don't know, like I do, um, why would you fall for them if there wasn't something good? Why? Is there something wrong with us? There's nothing wrong with us. They're good. They're good. And some of them aren't sociopaths. They're not even narcissists. They're even worse. So they're good, okay? So we need to talk about the good things that they use to lure us in, like the devil did in the Garden of Eden with Eden with Eve. It looked good to her eyes. It, he didn't just sit there and say, oh, do you want to die? You know what I mean? Forever? So that and ruin all of mankind and get your husband in trouble? Why would he do that? He's going to give her something that she thought looked good. I mean, back then, fruit. I just had some fruit because I'm trying to like, you know the holidays I'm trying to do the, the post turkey thing you know I had my soccer class today anyway so and by the way just a little pause soccer core fit is a nonprofit it is what supports my ministry when I go out and share the gospel and we um, support women and children who have been affected by domestic violence aware uh, domestic violence sexual assault and human trafficking all of our proceeds go to helping these uh these families that are in the shelters that god leads me to and those who will allow me to and they let me know what they want i i make sure that i first find out what they need because that's the best way to do it and you can help me support that this summer soccer sponsored my jesus revival in the park where there were children that enjoyed soccer the dancing children receiving jesus as their lord and savior adults it was a beautiful event we met five times in the park and it was anointed the enemy was fighting i was raging war the entire summer okay especially the last day because god now i look back he was training me to preach hallelujah amen so i completed it and afterwards i was like okay lord why did i do it and he told me to preach and to be ordained as a, as a pastor and preach to you so my church now is now open on my other channel joy party tv with patricia evans it's my church it's j-o-y because jesus overcame for you and on that channel i am sharing soccer dances and it's meant it's, it's designed for women and it's to uplift them and to help them and i give these classes my goal is to give them to whatever shelter wants to partner with me to get these classes for free and it, it can help you as well all right because movement you, i transform your body mind and spirit and i do that for you too guys the same thing but i do it as it pertains to what you need for your need okay so you you operate a little differently so i will work with you a little differently to get you the same results and if i can get the women and the men together okay so men i have women in my in my repertoire and so if you're really interested in some good women empathic women definitely connect with me and i right now but my business is as a matchmaker christian matchmaker is young christian men that are called they are they're they're called they know their purpose or they're looking to know their purpose and they're looking for their christian wives kingdom marriage amen all right so to wrap this up basically i want you to do that i want you to start praying and i want you to start bringing it before the lord and start getting the counseling and the coaching and the help that you need to really get clear what your story is and what happened to you so that you can articulate and you can get rid of the things and you can heal from the things that really were not supposed to be there for you the devil was trying to trip you up so you wouldn't get to this video today and get to where you are today so that you can thrive and be in your calling and purpose and meet your christian wife and all the gifts and husband if it's a woman and all the things that align with that once you've done that and if you need more if you need coaching let me know then you can begin to take those steps that I always talk about in terms of all these practical steps on how to meet the girl, how to talk to her, how to move your body, all that stuff. Comment below if you'd like me to do videos on that. So I just wanted to come on here and because this is a season where we're talking so much about family, we're around family, we just had Thanksgiving and we're gonna be around family for Christmas and or if we don't have family, we like I had to stay away sometimes, you, you're like, oh man, I wish I had my family, whatever the case is. Um, this is a time to pull back. Why don't you use a season to pull back and think about it? Instead of having the feelings and you don't know why those feelings are there, why don't you start to, to dig into the feelings and little bit by little bit and just kind of heal from them so that you don't get those triggers like you used to anymore. You probably wonder, why does that uh, trigger me so much? Why is it that I can't stand? Go back and figure those things out so that you can have strength. You know, because every time that I go and I and I strengthen and I deal with things, I strengthen myself because the Holy Spirit grows me. That is what you call resilient joy. 
You're being resilient so that you could be lighter and more joyful. So I hope that this helped you. If there's anything in this video, there are so many things I touched upon and even the definition of gaslighting or um, let me just give you the quick definition of um, trauma bonding because I think a lot of people are not clear with it. Really, it's because it's somebody very close to you that in a healthy environment, in situation, in a healthy relationship, you would be loving them so much. And every time they treat you well, it just makes you love them more. And so they got some of that going on, which your brain reacts to because it's normal, and then they abuse you as well. But you, as a baby, couldn't tell the difference. You just saw it all wrapped up in one, so you identified it as part of the love. So when you got older, you identify, you know, you, know, you can't tell the difference between when somebody's truly loving you the proper way, the way that God intended it, or if it's the kind of familiar way that people loved you at home. And until you deal with that, then you won't understand why your attachment style, meaning the way you deal with people in relationships, you won't understand why you always cling to people or you always push people away, or you, you, know, you have these ways about how you do relationships. The way to deal with that, because that's how you're gonna be with the right person, you don't wanna push them away. Deal with these things first, get that settled in your mind so you have an idea of what's going on, and so that when you meet the person, you're leveled, very secure attachment style, you're not afraid when they leave and you're not wanting to push them away, whatever the case is, and what you do instead is you're just talking about your life instead in a healthy way. And maybe you both are growing together in a healthy level, as healthy as possible from where you came from. So I didn't wanna leave you without at least explaining to you what um, trauma bonding is, people using, throwing around a lot of terms and they're not explaining them. So I hope that that helped you. And this is our message for today. This is the wisdom for today. And you might want to listen because this is Wisdom and Discernment from Patrice T. Evans. God bless you. I look forward to seeing y'all in our next video.